So anyway, this is of the domino sort, the kind that we just have to do massive amounts of reducing because ultimately all of these become an edge together and these become corners. And uh, when we look at this, we just basically take this as two sets of three by three by twos, basically. And that's really all this is. So we'll just kind of quickly go through it, we'll do a scramble, just show you a little bit of the motion here. So I'm gonna continue the process, Alakazam. And we're scrambled, pretty well, I think. Okay, so basically this in many ways is the simplest kind of cu uh, cuboid where we're gonna reduce it to the three by three by two using the algorithms that we talked about. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do something of a reduction where in our layer by layer, uh, we're gonna get our centers first. So as this being a five layer puzzle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the top layer down here. Basically, we're like I said, reducing it to a three by three by two. So let's get our middles here, our middles here, and then we start to fill these in and uh, convert this whole thing into one edge here, one, one center with edges over here so that it can become a three by three by two. So to place the centers, and you're gonna see this theme repeat itself, I'm gonna just start putting them in at the proper place. Um, you see all the corners are here. The technique that I like to use to put this all the way over here is I'm gonna move it in like so from the middle layer. Then I'm gonna turn it out of the way. Now remember, I moved it from the inner layer I created this side, so I'm gonna bump it out. Now I'm separating out the layers. And by doing that, I can isolate motions. Now I'm gonna bring this back. And after bringing it back, I'm now gonna bring this layer back here. And after doing that, I'm now gonna turn this back where it was, and then bring this layer back. The overall effect is I put that in. So now I just have two more edges to go. I got one over here, so same thing. Move it in from this layer to create this layer here. Bump it out of the way. Move it down. Bring it back. Move it up. Bang and zoom. So this is how I get centers from large cuboids. And you see me do this over and over again if you followed any other videos. So I've created this over here, move it out of the way. After moving it out of the way, I now move this back to bring my center in. I'm amazed at the stability of Grebois designs. Can't cut corners on it, but who the heck would think you should with something so complex? And turn it in. Okay, so this center is in, which means this center is also in. Now it's a matter of the long, arduous task of putting all these centers in over here. Now you're gonna see that this long task is gonna be very different when I go to its cousin puzzle, this big bohunk over here. So to get these centers in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pick a side and just start getting centers. So here's orange, two oranges over here. So I'm gonna fill in all these here and all these here. And the technique that I'm gonna use is, is I'm gonna have a workspace. I'm gonna move it out of the way once I put it in and then uh, continue to follow suit. It's easier to demonstrate. So anyway, I'm gonna to try to find the other orange that goes along with this. Here's an orange over here. Nope, doesn't belong over there. So perhaps, if I go like that, this orange will coincide with that. So I move it here and bang, I put two oranges over here and I put this orange over here as well. Now I, I had to move this in, so I'm gonna take all my oranges and move them off to the side. So this gets moved off, this gets moved off. Now within the process of moving the center back, can I put other oranges in? I'm not worried about any other colors here. And the answer is sure. Let's move this in over here. Do I have an orange? I got an orange here. So I'm gonna move this like so. Move this up over here. I guess I didn't have to do it twice. And bang, so now this is in. Let's put another orange which will be this guy. So with this first layer, it's pretty easy. 
Not a lot of tricks. This comes here. And now what I want to do is move it into here, but I'm going to have to move this back. I don't want to bump this out of the way quite yet. So I'll double turn it to bump, bump this over here, move it here, and I'll move it back. But before I move it back, can I move one in here? Can I move an orange over here? And sure, how about these guys? So move this like so, to put this opposite. This comes here, this comes here. Turn like so, and bang. Okay, so, and then we'll turn this back. So we got our first center here. Oh, we saw this guy over here. I spoke too soon. Okay, we have to put this in conjunction with that here. So let's turn, turn this down, turn this back. And now we go kerplop and move this in. We gotta move this back out and bang. Okay, so we have our big long center here. Now what? Well, let's go ahead and get the red side. We already have this over here. So this is gonna be a process that this is over here as well. So why don't we substitute this for this, we're going to bring this one out. The way that we're going to do that, uh, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to move this in and bump one out that we are eventually going to be moving away. So I want this to move away. So I'm going to move this in here. Which moves this into position. Then I'm going to double turn because now we've got to move this back and this will bump this out and turn that over here. Okay, so now that I have this here, let's find where the red goes. So which one coincides with this one? Well, it's probably gonna be this guy here. So we'll move this out. Turn and move this back. Now my goal here is maximizing what I can do. So I see that this is here, so this red will come into here, which is all fine and well, but what about this? This is gonna get messed up, and that can coincide with this guy. So why don't I just move this like so? So now with that said, I can move this in like that, and then I wanna bump, I wanna bring this in and bump this one out of the way, so double turn this, Move this in like so, double turn, and move it back. So this is just a process of placing things in and then replacing things. All right, now that I've done that, I wanna find the red that can coincide with this guy here. And that would be probably one of these two. So double turn here. And now this is in place. So it actually flows pretty, pretty evenly. Double turn here, here, and actually bring this back like so. Okay, so now what do we got? Got a couple to choose from. How about this? So I'll move this one in. We don't want to bump this one out, so I'm going to turn this in like thus. Now I got to get this orange one back in, so I'll double turn here, and then bring it back in. And result is that this is still here. So which middle one is going to coincide with that? And that'll be this one here. So, whoop, not that one here. Unless they turn it like this. Now it'll work. So now this is in. So let's take this out of the workspace, move it over to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and move it in to this slot so that when I double turn it, I can move this back into another slot. So move it into this slot, bumping the other red out of the way. And then double turn it so that I can now move this slot back, which moves this red slot back in. Okay, now we're gonna wanna move this center back, but let's see if we can kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna double turn this here so that this middle red can coincide with this. And bada bang. Now we just wanna move this last red one in. And curse splat. Okay, I'm moving kinda of fast. 
So if there's any other questions with this, let me know. But now this has to move into here. The way that you're going to do that is you want this to occupy this slot. But you can't do that without bumping this out of the way. So turn this over here so that I'm going to put this into this slot, which will bump this out, turn this around, and then it'll occupy this slot. So move it in to occupy this slot, to move this back out, and this back in, or go back in, double turn here, and then move it in. So now we've got these two, and we can easily replace this. So now we've got these two centers. And now I have to work on this, and this is where things get complicated. Uh, if you've been following other tutorials, you've seen me do something very similar with other similar kind of tutorials. Uh, puzzles, the 4x4x5, where you had to se sequentially put them in. This is just a slightly more complicated version of that. What I need to do, because I, I can't move things out of a workspace, this is filled over here, this is filled over here, what I'm going to want to do is, once I get something from a, a side, I'm going to want to bump it out of the way. But what am I going to, what am I going to replace it with? Well, if I put the red one over here, that's fine. But now, every time I do a move like this, I'm going to destroy the red one unless I have another red one up here. So what I'm going to want to do to protect this is I'm going to bump this out of the way by, by putting this here and replacing it with the red. But so that I don't destroy the red, I'm going to have to put another red one up here. So that's what I'm going to do. Move this out. Double turn. And move this back. So now I've got a red one here. Now I've got to put another red one here. So, double turn, and bring it back. Now, why did I do that? Well, I did that because now whatever I do here, these two are going to be complementary to each other. So if I turn this, I'll never lose a red piece. Why? Because there's equivalency here. It's not a super cuboid, so because of that equivalency, I can replace those guys. I'm going to do the same thing here. Both of these are, are going to be reds. So I'm going to move... I'm going to go like this. To replace these two reds here, I'm going to bat this in like so. Double turn and bat it back. And now these two reds are going to occupy this position. So, move this in like so. Double turn and bat it back. Now, I'm taking a couple of shortcuts and I gotta concentrate, but basically what that does is it frees up these layers to be placed correctly. So now what, what can we put in? Well, we've got a green, blue, green. What I wanna do is put a green one into this slot and I've got one over here. So I'm gonna double turn. And as you can see, it didn't mess these up, but I did manage to put this in, didn't mess these up. So now I've got this one. So this one, I can actually maybe do the same thing. I want to move this out. But what am I going to use as its reciprocal? Its reciprocal is this side over here. Now this side has green as blue, blue, green, if you could see that. So what I want to do is substitute this with a green, green, blue, which should be one of these guys, this. So I'm going to turn this over here to bat it out of the way, double turn it, and move this in. So that sets this up into a position so that now I can just go like, bang. So now this is in. So this is in and this is in. These are all fine. Now I need these guys to be in conjunction with each other. And that's going to be this and this. And they should be nice and symmetric here. So this is fine. This is fine. Now what about over here? Well, I think I've run out of reds, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a complementary orange over here and an orange over here. Now it's going to seem to get a little confusing, but with enough concentration it should make sense. Double turn this here and turn this here. Okay, now if I can remember, an orange has to come over here to coincide with that. So we'll move this like so, double turn and move this back. Okay, so now we have everything complementary here. What I need to do now is I need to put these guys in where this, this green is. So this is just a matter of positioning. Take this and put it into this space to be replaced by this. So move this in.
turn and move it back. All right, so that's set up three reds and an orange, three reds and an orange. I've got a green here that, I get, uh, that I've got to get out, but I've got this blue, green, blue, which is complementary to green, blue, green. Blue, blue, green, obviously I'm gonna be using this one. So this has to come over to here. So bump this out of the way here, double turn it, and bump this back. So now that I have all these, which are complementary to each other, I just have to move this like so, which puts this in and this in at the same time. And now that just leaves these guys over here, but this blue is not complementary to this green. So what I need to do is I just need to put a green one in here, if I can find one right here. So turn, double turn this here and turn back. Basically what I'm doing, and I am moving fast just because I'm showing a reductive strategy, is I'm basically using the process of, of making complementary layers here. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm ready to make my final move of bringing this in. Um, but I want to coordinate these tops here too so that I can do it all in one fell swoop. Turn this here, turn this here. And now by setting things up to be complementary like that, one turn, and I've created all my one by three bars. So we're good. All right, so that's the basic strategy. You can solve any kind of center using this, no matter how tall it is, no matter how wide it is. So if someone brilliantly invents uh, um, eight by eight by nine, you do it the same way. So now we just start putting our centers back. This comes over to here. Red, white, blue is gonna come over here. So we're gonna get all of our blues to move them in. We're gonna be doing this with replacement. This will come here to bump out this slot here. And then to place it back in, I'm gonna double turn it and then put it back in like so. Simple stuff, and it didn't mess this one up over here. Another blue, this, to move it here. I can't put it into this slot, which is not a blue, because how would I be able to bump it back? So I'm gonna replace it with this slot. Double turn here, and then put it back. This way I can replace everything that I, that I took out. So finally, to put the other blue in, this one, to get this over to here, again, line it up so that it's right across from the same color, so that when I go like this, which took it out of a slot, I can now double turn it and bring it back. All right, so I got the blue, the red, and now what comes next, this is orange. So same thing here, move it into, well, we'll do it like this. Move it into this slot, turn, move it back. Because every time I move this, I'm taking this out here. And now with this one, how am I gonna do this? Well, this has to occupy this position, which means I'm gonna put this in this position, double turn it so that this, which got bumped over here, will then occupy over here. So turn, and then to move these layers back, double turn and move it back, and you got it. So, simple stuff, so to speak. We should have all of our centers in.